And he says, I will make the, all things new. That's what he promised me. And he said, I'll make your health. I will create newness in your health. Newness in your children. Newness in your marriages and your careers. Newness in families and businesses. Newness in bank accounts. I will make all things new. And so I looked at that and a lady burst in earlier and she was chatting to Mark and I listened to her voice because he told me what will happen this year. And he told me that, Clint, I will take five years and I will squeeze it into one year. Well, this lady ran in here just now in the second service and she was telling Mark, she says, you'll never believe what happened. I was just looking there. I was waiting. I was like Zacchaeus sitting on a tree waiting for the word to arrive. Welcome to Clinton Palfreman Ministries. And she says, uh, I got this thing at Pine Haven. What normally takes five years has taken one year and one year and eight months. I said, that is God. He's true to his word. So here's another one. Yesterday, I'm looking at my cell phone. Suddenly, an SMS pops in. Here's a lady. She's given a testimony. She says, you'll never believe it in this testimony. She's saying it to somebody else. She said what happened was the moment she left money, left her hand in another bank account, five times that arose. Suddenly, I will make all things new. In our own life, there was a house next door. It's the beginning of the year. We're on holiday. Before we left, we went for seven days. Before we left, I said to Lydia, you know, we really should have taken this house next door. It would have been so good for our office. While we were away for seven days, on the fifth day of January 2018, the lady calls us. We had arranged the house before, but we had let her down, and we said we should have just taken it, and um, we didn't take it. She SMSs us, and she says, would you still like the house? I will make all things new. Even your mistakes will prosper this year. Where you've missed it, they're coming back. Suddenly, I will make all things new. He said to me that I will take out the absence or the delay of time lapse. There's not going to be any more time. It's going to happen just like this. Another thing happened. What happened was this client had taken the work away from us. But he phoned this year. He said, no, I'm definitely using those people. He got let down by those people. Suddenly, this thing popped back up. Suddenly. I will make all things new. A lady in the last service that I preached at, she came and she encouraged me. And I don't know if she's here, but this message came from her. Because God showed me the lady that was bent over for 18 years. Well, she came running up and she said, hey, I just want to encourage you, my boy. For 18 years, I've been bent over with the curvature of the spine. But as the word of God left your mouth, and I received it, I stood up straight. That's the same as this woman in the Bible. Suddenly, I will make all things new. So there is nothing impossible for God. Let me just tell you, if you will listen and you will do, it's one thing to hear the word, but it's quite another thing to do what you need to do. And so as the word goes out today, I want you to hear it, but I don't want you to just hear it. I want you to get home and get busy with what I'm telling you to do, and your life will change forever from today. All right. So we're talking about vision. And he said this, my son, as far as your eyes can see, I've given it to you. And I thought about that. And that's Genesis 13, verse 14 to 15. The Bible also speaks, and it says that in Proverbs 18, uh, 29, 18, he says this, where there is no vision, the people perish. But it also goes as far as to say this. Where there is no vision, the people wonder. But it goes as far as to say this. Where there is no vision, the people run like wild horses. If your family is helter-skelter, husband there, wife there, children there, things going on here, things going on there, get a vision this year. Because a vision will stop you from wondering. A vision will bring the whole thing together. You see, if you sit with your wife and you say to her, like we do periodically, we sat yesterday and we wrote it down. But is there something, this is what I wrote down, how can we do what we do better? Sit with your wife. Plan. Sit with your children. Plan. Because if you don't, helter skelter. No vision. Bring it together. 
and a vision that you're all believing God together and you will see your family will shift and change levels. Isn't that wonderful? So what do I see for 2018? Well, I can tell you this, that you will only receive as far as your eyes can see because that's what he promised over here. For all the land which you see, I will give it to you. In other words, it's a law. If you don't see it, you can't have it. If you see it small, you receive small. If you see it big, you receive big. So what am I telling you to do? Think big. Think big. Because as big as you can think, he will deliver to you. Why? He promised it. Why? He's faithful. Why? He's always true. No one ever goes beyond what he sees. What you see becomes your boundary. Gideon, that Mark was talking about, what happened to him is, although the Midianites were coming in, inside of him was a mighty warrior, but he never saw it. So they were coming in, they were handling the crops, they were taking everything, and they left them with nothing. But the moment that God said to him, Gideon, get up. Gideon, you mighty man of valor, move, go forward. The moment he said that, this thing went off in Gideon like lightning. It sprung that boy up. He knew who he was. And the next chapter, he's holding the king's heads in his hands. And he's slain those giants. What happened? He saw who he was. As far as your eyes can see, to you will I give it. What am I telling you to do? Get a vision. Get a vision. What will a vision do? It's going to draw everything that you need into your life. Quickly. How far you see determines how far you reach in life. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart for everything that you do flows out of it. Everything that you do flows out of it. Your reach, you've been told, is the devil, the government. Zuma, let me tell you something. There is nothing that can stop your heart from producing. I don't care what it is. The only one stopping you from reaching your goal is you. You. No government, no authority, no devil. No one can stop you from reaching your goal but you. And that's the truth. Do I get any believers in here? How you think determines how you live. You want to think small, you're going to plan small, you're going to action small, and you are going to receive small. But I can tell you something, if you plan big, you are going to receive big. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. So the size of your thoughts determine the size of your life. And what you can do is you can go and look outside. When you leave this place, go and look at lives. Just look at them. Because a tree is known by its fruit. Just look at the life, and you'll know exactly what is going on in that heart. Wow. Because that's the way you're made. Aren't you beautifully made? Isn't it amazing that you can change your heart and change your life? Isn't it amazing that your thoughts don't have to, your thoughts determine your future, nothing else? The way that you think determines how big you can get. So if you can think big, you can change your whole life. You can think your way out of where you are. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We saw that in Numbers 13, verse 33, Joshua and Caleb, they thought like rulers, created in the image and likeness of God. They were saying to the people, the people said, hey, who are you, man? But you know what? They were the ones enjoying the beds in the promised land. They were the ones living in the mansions. They were the ones living and operating those businesses, having bras, enjoying their time with their family. They were them. What happened to the others? Look at it. The 10 leaders that didn't believe it took two to three million people and never went into the promised land. Why? No vision. No sight. They'd be blind. Leaders of the blind. Be careful who you're listening to. Be careful that they don't lead you into the ditch. Matthew 15 verse 13. Those guys thought like grasshoppers. You want to be around. If you are the biggest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. You need some big thinkers around you. Why? Because they're going to lift you up. That's what you need, big thinkers. All right, so let's look at it. What occupies the heart determines what is attracted to your life. What occupies the heart determines 
what is attracted to your life. Your heart and the heart of man is like a spiritual magnet. It attracts whatever is desired in it. I'll give you an example. When we had the youth here and when we did the youth, Lydia and I, um, quite a few years ago, probably 10 years ago, maybe even more, we said to them, I want you to build a dream sheet. And some of them took it seriously and some of them did it. Now your heart will produce good or bad and your heart doesn't know what's good and what's bad. It's just designed by God to produce because the enemy was never supposed to take your life. So your heart is designed to produce whatever's put in it. So what these girls did, we said, all right, girls, here it is. Here's some magazines. I want you to stick some pictures on and then we are going to believe God that those things that you stuck on are going to come to pass. So what did they do? Set number A, they built on hot, steamy nights, sex, drugs, alcohol, lesbian relationships, all kinds of things. I'm telling you where to see the parents. I needed counseling after that. There's things there that I didn't even know were possible on the dream sheet. This set over here said we'd like to be the top of our class. We'd like good husbands. We'd like good jobs. We're going to put our heads down, blah, 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 whatever it is. This bunch are sitting right now at the top of Mr. Price, at the top of Investec. This bunch over here, we saw them, a couple of them, one of them was in the pavilion, she's carrying a baby, no husband. Can you see? Whatever they put on that dream sheet, whatever was the desire of their heart, whatever they were thinking was attracted into their life. Now it's amazing, that's how the heart is. It's like a magnet. It'll attract people. It'll attract resources and it'll attract opportunities into your life. And what happened? That's what happened to these girls. That's what happened to these girls. And so it's amazing that if you think about it, a criminal will attract a criminal. How do they know each other? There's something inside of them that's pulling them together. How? How does a homosexual know another homosexual? How? And so that is a powerful force in your heart. And so I'm telling you to be careful what you think. When you're putting down your vision, be careful. Because whatever you desire is coming out. You desire small, you receive small. You desire big, you receive big. You think immoral thoughts. It's not long before those things are coming out in your life. People will start arriving. Resources that you need will start arriving to produce what you've put in your heart. Be careful. And so businessmen, I want to tell you that that is how we do business. I put the thing in my heart. So ever ready or prit or spa, it doesn't matter what they say. They told me at spa, get out of here. He told me, get out. But the next minute, here comes an opportunity. And they say, hey, we've seen your work, but two different people. This guy says, get out. This one says, I need you in my business. You see, because your heart is more powerful than what people say. It's a spiritual dynamic. Isn't that wonderful? And so what we do is when we start the year, I look at our business, and I put it in my heart, and I say what I'd like to achieve, and I see clients coming to our office, and I see them lined up, and I see them coming in, and I see me not having to call, because I've always told you that they call us, we don't call them, and I've seen that, and I've seen that, and it's found in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 10 and 11, it says that you will have houses that you never had to build, well we're not building, I didn't phone that lady, she called me, so the opportunity came to me. I didn't go to it. Can you see? So the moment you put something in your heart, people, resources, and opportunities are drawn to you. Let me show you a picture of that. David. David, all that little boy did was say to God, hey, listen, I can take that big guy. That's it. What is that called? It's called a vision. And the moment he said that, everything is magnetized to him. Opportunities, personalities, and resources. You see, David didn't know what to do, but he had a vision. And so what did God do? Here comes an opportunity. He has the big guy in front of him. He's got a spear. He's got, from head to toe, he is covered with armor. There is no way that David is getting in there with a stone. But God says, you see over there, David, you see, the moment you have a vision, the vision is always first. God will then bring an opportunity. He says, can you see that tiny little space over there? That's your opportunity, David. That's where you're going to get this guy. And I was speaking to Mark earlier, and he said that they, these guys used to take a sling with the left hand and hit a hair with the sling. Isn't that amazing? 
And so God, the moment David gets the vision, God then brings the opportunity. But he not only brings the opportunity, he brings the resource. He brings the resource. Look at it. Look at it. The vision that occupies your heart determines what God will cause your eyes to see. Listen to that. The vision that occupies your heart determines what God will cause your eyes to see. David was walking in and out of the brook. He never noticed the stones before. But the moment he got a vision to kill that big guy, he recognized the resource. The resource were the stones. Isn't that amazing? He walked by them how often? He never saw them. But today, he recognized them. Today, you will recognize your resources. Today, the opportunities will start flowing into your life. The moment you get a vision, if you will go home, you don't just hear this word, but you enter it. I'm telling you now, your life is set to change. Why? Because you got a vision. What do I want for my family? What do I want for my business? What do I want in 218? you got a vision. The problem is not the resource. The resource is there. God has enough. The problem is vision. The problem is you're thinking too small. You're thinking too small. Isn't it amazing? Uh, look at this, people. Look at this, people. Pastor Bill Winston. Amazing, 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 amazing. How is it possible to be sitting in a boardroom when they wouldn't in the beginning let you anywhere near him? How's it possible? I'll tell you how. Because in my heart, I needed what he had. And my heart produced a relationship which brought the two together. That's what it is. That's what it is. Your heart will bring any person you desire and anything that you desire to fulfill itself. Isn't that amazing? Listen to this. David's pockets were empty, but God said to him, look down there, there's the stones. I thought about that. When I arrived in this church, my pockets were empty. I stood in a welfare line here, and I ate out of the welfare queues. I don't know if any of you have done that, but I can tell you some is good, some is bad. And I had a cooler box. My pockets were empty. David's pockets were empty. But the moment I got a vision, what did we do? We said, we'll take on the youth. The moment I got involved with God's vision, provision, opportunities, people, resource started to happen. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? So the moment you get a vision, things start to click and start to happen. Notice here that the vision is first. The people, resource, and opportunity is second. What do you got to do when you get home? Anyone can answer. Find your vision. And everything else that you have been desiring will be added to your life. Thank you, Lord. All right. The size of your vision determines the size of your plan, which determines the size of action. Where a person's vision is small, the plan will be small, the action is small, and everything else around it will be small. It is the size of your vision that determines these things. Vision determines plan, plan, action, and action outcome. Look at this man's vision. I was shocked when I saw this. In, um, in America, when I flew over, we saw these sky rises coming out of the ground. Well, that's what that is. Oh, Roberts University. 110 stories. We're sitting on level one here. There's 110. How big was this man's vision? There were 33, there were 33 buildings on this plot. Amazing. Isn't it amazing? Am I the only one amazed? At least say you're amazed. What was on his desk? Every time they walked on, you can't see it. But I'll tell you what it says there. Make no little plans here. Every time a student walked into his office, that is that plaque on his desk. Make no small plans here. A man's large vision will determine his large plans, which will determine his large action, which will determine large outcomes. You can go and see that. In Tilsa, at any time you desire. That man's heart is poured out into the earth. It's time to get a vision. Here is a woman. Uh, and I want to show you how a small vision can produce a small life. Let me just show you my picture here. Uh, we are, we are. The size of the vision determines the size of plan. Let's look at this. Here's my picture coming up next. Praise God. There we go. Not much of an artist. 
But I'll tell you what that looks like. And you've got to see it. You know, you kind of got to work in that. Some people are gifted. And some people draw stick figures. But it means something to me. This woman here, this lady, she could have gone into the oil business. But I want to show you something. So they're coming to collect her, daughter, uh, her sons to be bondsmen. She turns around to the prophet of God and she said, uh, they're coming to collect my sons. My husband was in debt. He's died. He was serving God. What can you do? He turns around to her and he says to her, listen, what do you have in your house? She says, I've got nothing. She doesn't recognize what she has. She has children. And I want to tell you that you need to use your children. I've told you this before. You want to, you want to get something done. You put them in your house. You work with them. You work as a family together. You want to pay some debts. You put it in the center of your dining room table and you believe God together. That happened this week. A man was needing a million rand payout from the insurance company. It wasn't happening. I said to him, go and get your children. Sit together, all of you, and agree together. It wasn't a couple of days, and he was paid out 980 whatever thousand rand. I'm telling you. Wow, childlike faith. No mud in their hearts. They just believe it. Isn't it wonderful? A pure conscience delivers. Right, that's not what we're talking about. What do you have in your house? He says, she says, I've got oil. He says, all right, get the oil. Go and borrow vessels. He says, borrow vessels from everywhere. Look at the sentence. From everywhere. In other words, get as many as you can. From all your neighbors. Empty vessels. Do not gather a few. Do not gather a few. Do not think small. Do not gather a few. Do not gather a few. That's what you need to see. Don't gather a few. Think big. This is not about a car and a house and a da-da. No, no, no. This is bigger than that. This is changing a whole nation. This is changing a generation. This is changing your family. This is putting a thing, a family together that will last forever. David's name is still being said now, 3,000 years after. That's what we're talking about. This is not a car. This is something else. This is a vision. Gather not a few. Gather not a few. This lady could have been in the oil business today. Today. But the problem was she ran out of vessels. Her thinking was too small. She could have set up a plant making vessels over here. She could have been making vessels and supplying it to her house and then selling it out. Vessel, supply, sell. Vessel, supply, sell. Vessel, supply, sell. Can you see it? But her vision was too small. So what happens? She says to her boys... And maybe she should have even imparted to her boys to make them think bigger because they were the ones that were going to collect the vessels and keep it moving and keep it moving. But they didn't have a vision. So that tells you you've got to start when they're small, bringing them up. Bring me yet another vessel, my boy. He turns around to her and he says, there is not another vessel. And so the oil ceased. And so the oil ceased. You see, when... When the vessel ran out, the oil stopped. When the vision stops, the life stops. When the vision stops, life stops. No problem, no problem with the oil. The problem was vision. There was nothing wrong with the oil. The oil would have kept pouring for years. We would have seen her business today. It might have been called... Uh, uh, let's be creative. Could have been um, God's miracle oil business since day 110. Isn't that amazing? That oil would have kept pouring as long as they had kept giving vessels. The problem is always, or never the shortage of provision, it is always the bankruptcy of vision. The problem is never a shortage of supply. It is always a shortage of sight. The oil would have kept pouring. In fact, Peter in the boat, they could have still been fishing today. They could have been like those guys in Cape Town, just dragging it into the harbor, just like that. How many more boys can I get? How many more partners can I get? And they could have dragged out that fish. I'll tell you why. Because in the kingdom, like Mark said, there is an abundant supply. There's no shortage in the kitchen. In the, in the kitchen. There's no shortage in the kitchen either. There's no shortage in the kingdom. Isn't that powerful? There's no shortage in the kitchen. That's a power, that thing will preach. <laughs> there is no shortage. 
In fact, you can live every day Christmas. Ask my wife, she'll tell you. You don't have to wait. You can get it today. If you really want it, go and get it. You want a pair, you get it. Shirts, earrings, whatever it is you need. There's more than enough. You just write a check. But I can tell you something, it comes by vision. All right, what will vision do? What will vision do? It'll create speed. Now, God knows that I needed some speed because at 30 years old, I had nothing but a cooler box and a bed. So I had to find out some things. Listen, how am I going to squash five years into one? Because I need 15, I need three years. I need to be at least 15 years ahead of, my, ahead of where I am. So I need to do this thing somehow, Lord, divinely. I can tell you how. Vision. A dream in your heart. It will pull everything that you need into your life. Right. He says this, write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he may run. That he may run. What does vision do? It creates runners. How? Sight. How? Bright lights. Let me show you very quickly. Those who see far, run fast. And those who see vast, run fast. If you come down this, this is Glenigi Road, right? Over here. If you come down at night and you turn your headlights off and you can't see anything, how fast can you go? Anyone can answer. Not very fast. But the brighter your lights, the clearer you see, the faster and the further that you can go in a short space of time. What does vision do? Makes you, gives you the ability to see further so that you can run faster, so that you can cover more ground. Isn't that amazing? So there are some ordinary lights, ordinary cars. There are some cars with no headlamps. Then there are some cars with good headlamps. And there are some cars with what you call a matrix LED system. That thing is so bright you can see 600 meters up ahead, almost a kilometer. How fast can you go when it's daylight? That's what I'm talking about. Vision. It is the ability to see. It is the ability to see. Large visions always translate into a sense of urgency. It imparts urgency in you, in, in you because you know that you've got to keep moving, keep going forward, keep moving forward. And what happens is you cover, short, you, uh, cover vast distances in short time. All right, praise God. I want to just share one other thing with you, which I didn't share with the last service, and I want to get this to you. The Apostle Paul said this. Now, the Apostle Paul was a latecomer. How many of you feel that you are latecomers? There's still hope for you. <laughs> he was a latecomer who became a forerunner. Okay, but he said this. He said, listen, he, he saw the vision of Christ. He, he said, hey, just to know him, just to know him. And he said this, Paul said, I count it not myself to have apprehended but this one thing. And this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth, reaching forth, running forward. What does vision do? Creates runners. Reaching forth, running. This one thing I do, leave those things behind. Stop worrying about them. Get a vision for the future. Racing forward. Get a vision for the future. That is what Paul did and he became a forerunner of his time. Isn't that wonderful? So when you see far, you run fast. And when you run fast, you cover great distances in a short amount of time. That's vision. How do I start? You use the scriptures to paint big pictures on your heart of the, expect, of the expectations that you're desiring of God. And so if it's um, whatever the need, Gideon used a picture. I mean, God said, you mighty man of valley. He took that thing, he put it in his heart and and I've told you before, that's the first thing I had to do. I had to find out who I was. I mean, Lydia was going to the windows. I'd say, yeah, you go, you go. I wouldn't even go to the window. I was hiding like Gideon. I wouldn't even go. But I said, fast forward three years later, I was running after criminals up the road. What happened? I painted big pictures that I am the king's kid, that whatever he told me I am, I am. And I'm a king, and I'm reigning, and he made me in his image and likeness. You paint big pictures on your heart. How do I start? The first thing you do is 
God says, if you will look after my house, I'll look after your house. So your vision should include soul winning. And pastor has spoken about that this year. How many souls do I want to bring in a month? How many? And how am I going to do it? Lord, help me just share my testimony. Just share my testimony. That's it. In your workplace, wherever you are, who are you going to bring in? Soul winning. Your prayer vision. Your prayer vision can be as simple as, Lord, help me with these children. I know that we're writing a vision, and let me just show you that before we go, because you'll probably never see it again. Your prayer vision. These are the visions of Ethan and Emma. So your prayer vision. Uh, what is that? I want a trophy for kindness and win a soul each month to help a soul each month. Help me with my schoolwork. And then what you do is you put scriptures to that. So in other words, for Emma, she wanted to be, and this is part of your prayer vision, she wanted to be a top pianist. A top pianist. So I said to her, my girl, if you're going to sit on the couch and watch TV, I can tell you that thing is not going to happen. However, if the hand of the diligent bears rule and God's word is the truth, then my girl, every morning, you're going to get in front of that piano and you're going to play. And you're going to practice. And in the evening, you're going to practice. Because you don't make champions without practice. Because the hand of the diligent bear rule. Does that help you about painting a scripture? And so what you want to do is, whatever your vision is, you want to link it up to God's word. And then he will watch over his word to perform it. That's your prayer life. That's your prayer life. So it's all very simple. Then what we do in the mornings is that uh, when we're about to go, all go off to school, we thank God. Father, I thank you that the hands of the diligent are going to bear rule this uh, today. I thank you, Lord, for the souls that she's going to save. I th- and we're seeing it. And I thank you, Lord, that you're going to be with them in everything that they do, that Ethan is going to outswim uh, all his competitors. I thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. That's what we do. So you put a vision down. Then you put your prayer, uh, you make your prayer vision. All right. And then your sowing plan. So all these things are the first thing you do. And the reason for that is because seek first the kingdom of God and all, um, seek first the kingdom of God, his way of doing things. And all these things that others are dying to get will be added to your life. When you look after his house, he makes sure that uh, he looks after your house. All right, take time to plan out your course of action and then act massively and quickly. When you have a vision, we had a vision for a thing uh, called Faith Uncapped. I got the vision in the night. By the next morning, I'm already starting on that vision. Vision, what it will do is cancel out all time wasting. It will impart into you something that causes an urgency in you. You keep running, keep running, keep running with the vision and you'll see it. Take time to plan your course of action and act massively and quickly. And then how to protect your vision. This was given to me by God on the 4th of December. This is what he said for my own life, and I want to give it to you because I I believe that some of these things here, I'm not the only one. I'm giving this to you to help you hedge in your vision. He said this, son, walk close to me and don't walk alone. And the reason why he said that is because when a lamb or sheep leaves a flock, He's very vulnerable when he's not with a shepherd. In other words, he can easily be taken out because he's been separated. You need to walk close to God in 2018. He said, be careful of alternatives and listen for my voice. How many times we just about to receive the vision of God, here comes an alternative. And we take the alternative and we miss God's best. And here we're settling for this. Isn't that amazing? Happens in so many things. Happens even in relationships. You can take an alternative. In fact, I never listened to my mom. I should never have taken the alternative. Honor your mother and father that your days be long. I took an alternative many years ago. It cost me dearly. Listen. Listen to God's voice. Question yourself. Is this my father? Would my father be doing this? Is this my father? Would my father be doing this? Don't be tempted by selfishness, pride, and arrogance, but do all that you do in love because faith, as you know it, is the most valuable asset and it works by love. If love is out of the equation, you are wasting your time. Your faith will not work. Amazing. Then he said to me, one of the enemy's traps is to steal your joy and then the connection between faith and love, which is joy, is lost and nothing works. He then said to me, avoid red flag subjects. That means there are some things in your families that you should never, ever go there. 
I know sometimes it's nice to just tap on there, but I'm not the only one. I know it. Am I the only one? Am I the only one? I know I'm not. Avoid them. Avoid them. There are some things that you might say to your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your brother-in-law, whatever it is, whoever it is, that you shouldn't be saying. Because you know that it's going to create, it's going to change the whole atmosphere of the room, it's going to go crazy. Am I right? Avoid it. Avoid it. Steer around those things some kind of way. Avoid it. And why does he say avoid it? Because it creates anger, hatred, and frustration. What does that do? It changes the atmosphere of faith. And what it does is wherever there is envying and strife, the Bible says there is every evil work, and you have stepped out of God right into the enemy's camp. So the moment you start an argument, you have just stepped into the enemy's camp. You can expect, you can expect to be not walking with God. You can expect problems. Avoid red flag subjects. Don't be moved by the opinions of others. Only be moved by the ruler of my word. Constantly measure, am I walking in the truth or not? Lord, my vision is a good marriage. Well, husbands, love your wives. Honor them, not hit them. Not abuse them. Wives, honor your husbands. That's how you get a good marriage. That's walking in the truth. Lord, I want you to intervene in my finances. If you are not a tither, you get no finances. Simple. That's walking in the truth. That is a vision. Isn't that amazing? Walk in the truth. Walk in the truth. If you are not training your children, please don't expect them to come out somehow, some miracle children. No. You have to train the children in the ways of the Lord that they can come out. That's the way it works. Walking in the truth. Abraham obeyed God and saw all the children coming out. He taught his children. That's the way it works. Walk in the truth. Stay focused. Keep moving forward in the truth. And don't stop to talk to strangers on the way. How many strangers we've come across and they've come across our life and they appear all rosy. Everything's cool. Hey, how are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's cool. Everything's nice. And they take you off. Be careful of your associations. I can look at your life, I can look at your friends, and I can tell you exactly where your life is going. There are some associations that you shouldn't have. You should not have them. Those things should be cut off if you want to get to God's best. That's how to protect your vision. That is all about vision, and that is all I have for you right now. So give God some praise and thank Him for that. Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise. Let me pray for you. Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving. We thank you so much for your word, Lord. Wow. Your word is such a light unto our feet that our feet cannot slide when we are trusting and relying on your word. You said our feet will be like Han's feet, Father. They will not slip, nor slide, nor fall. It doesn't matter what happens, Father. If we are focused in on what you've told us to do and we have a set vision for this year, Father, I thank you, Lord. As we submit it under your hand, I thank you, Lord. You said that all resources, all people, and every opportunity will be drawn to our life to fulfill the great plan and the vision that you've put in our lives. Let it not be said, Father, late in life, when our time for, to leave this earth, Father, that we have not fulfilled what you have called us to fulfill. As grandparents, you said that we will bring forth fruit in old age. Help us with our grandchildren. Help us to impart vision. Help us to bring them up. Let us tell our grandchildren, you can be the best, my boy. I see you like this. I see you like that. Help us, Father, even in old age, to bring forth good, to speak forth good on our children, Father, and to bring out the greatness in them. Give us this vision, hedge it in with the blood of Jesus, Father. As we go home today, let us not just be hearers of this word, Father. But let us enter this word. Let us sit down as families. Let us sit down as husbands and wives. And if there's disagreements, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I messed up. Right or wrong, it doesn't matter. We're going forward with God. Help us, Lord. Help us in this situation. As far as the east is from the west, nothing can hold you back. 
There is no sin too great. All you have to do is say, Lord, and say it now after me, because we are out of time. Say, Lord, please forgive me. Please release me. Help me that I can be the best that I can be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for these visions to spring forth. I pray for suddenly things to start happening. I pray for resources to appear. I pray for people and opportunities, good people, good opportunities, good resources, Father. I pray that anything that is, that is not of you, let it not appear, Father. Give us the grace. Give us the grace over the season to just put down great visions, Father, that we'll see them coming forth. In, my, in your mighty name. I thank you, Lord. I've never seen your word fail, and I will not see this word fail. I expect, Lord, to see great things out of these, your people, Father, to come forth, Father, to bring forth, Lord. I thank you for it, Lord. Great and mighty things that I will be shocked at what's going to come out of this. I will be shocked, and I will say, this is the finger of God. I thank you for it, Lord, and I give you praise for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord.